He is a textbook abuser. So he goes, you were raped. You were raped. You were raped and abused and assaulted. He asked if I had trouble enjoying being with someone because of my trauma. He asked me if age difference mattered. He also explained that he was fine with anyone over 22. I thought, he's trying to sleep with me. The governor's trying to sleep with me. That was Charlotte Bennett, a former aide to New York Governor Andrew Cuomo, in a CBS interview yesterday. She is one of three women accusing Cuomo of sexual harassment, allegations that are being investigated by the state attorney general. Cuomo responded this week to the allegations. He apologized for making anyone feel uncomfortable and said it was not intentional. He also said he has never touched anyone inappropriately. We reached out to the governor's office for a response to Charlotte Bennett's allegations in the interview and did not receive a response. Meanwhile, other allegations against Cuomo were also piling up, including how his office failed to disclose the true number of COVID deaths during nurse in nursing homes last year. The New York Times reported yesterday that top Cuomo aides rewrote a state health report to remove the number of deaths. The governor's special counsel told the Times they removed the data on nursing home residents who died in hospitals because it was not adequately verified. They also said they did not change the report's conclusion. Cuomo had previously admitted to a delay in releasing the accurate number of deaths. The governor is now facing mounting calls to resign. Joining us now is one of the Democrats calling on Cuomo to step down. Maya Wiley is a former counsel to New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio and a former chair of the agency that investigates civilian complaints against the NYPD. She is also a candidate for New York City Mayor. Maya, I'm so happy to see you this evening. Um, Thank you so much for being here. What made you decide that Andrew Cuomo should resign right now before the investigation by Letitia James, the attorney general, is complete? Well, thank you for having me, Zerlina. It's a pleasure to be with you, too. And let's focus on what the call for resignation is. It is not a call to arrest Andrew Cuomo. It is not a call to demand that he pay fines. It is a call to say that you, Andrew Cuomo, governor of the state of New York, who were elected by the people to uphold the rule of law, to protect and to serve, and to use the power lent you by the people, was not to be for personal gain or abuse of power. And that's really centrally what we're talking about right now, is abuse of power. And we heard it loud and clear from three separate women, all making the same pattern of behavior allegations, who neither worked in the same type of positions or encountered him in the same way or circumstances. And I want to add one other thing, Zerlina, that a lot of people don't really realize about New York State. When you listen to Governor Cuomo say that he didn't realize that his behavior would be seen as ins insensitive, New York State has a law that requires sexual harassment training by employers. I personally, as a professor at the New School University, had to take this training, as I required also when I ran a not-for-profit organization, that my staff take this training. And everything he did goes against what New York State law requires employers to train employees not to do. So explain to me why someone who is the most powerful person in the state should somehow be ignorant of its laws. That's actually such an interesting point. And as somebody who has spent the better part of a decade working in New York, I can confirm that that is true. And one of the things that you said specifically is this idea that it doesn't matter what his intention was. The law does not actually require to you, ha to you having the intention uh, to harass someone or make them uh, feel uncomfortable. If they felt uncomfortable, that is evidence of the harassment. So it's important that folks at home understand that that's what the law says um, and not to get 
uh, sort of caught up in his statement. One of the striking parts of the interview for me, particularly because I'm also a survivor of sexual assault, is that he seemed weirdly fascinated with the fact that she had experienced trauma and sexual assault. And he sort of used that in his very personal uh, interrogation of her dating life, her sex life. I am horrified by that. That actually, for me, crosses a line that, you know, previously um, the allegations had not crossed for me. What was your reaction to that piece of the interview with Nora O'Donnell? I reacted the way you did, Zerlina, in the sense that it was such an abusive thing to say. If you know someone has suffered that kind of violence and trauma, that you would say to them, you were violated, you've been traumatized over and over again, and then ask them about their sex lives connected to it. And this is a young woman and a very powerful man. And we know that sexual violence is a crime of power. Uh, that is fundamentally what it is. And it was simply a frightening abuse of power for him and his position to call her to his office using his power as her boss, to have her there by herself, and then to do that to her it is beyond insensitive. There's something um, deeply disturbing about it. Now, we should say that, yes, we don't know his side of that, except that we know he has not said it was, he has not denied it. In fact, he's done the opposite mm -hmm. of not denying By not denying it, and a person in his position is actually saying, it's true, I did it, I just didn't know it was insensitive. That's an admission. So for all the folks who say, look, you know, there hasn't been an investigation, once again, I say, the issue about, is about his holding power right now. The issue of investigation is about what else to do about it, whether or not he's violated laws mm -hmm. and what we do about law violation. But right now, we're just talking about this man holds the keys to the kingdom. And we've seen that both in the case of nursing homes and in the case of these women, that there are some serious, serious questions and he has not denied what she says that he said to her or did to her that day. He just says it wasn't inappropriate and he didn't know it was insensitive. That's such a good point, and it's one that I'm a little bit obsessed with, particularly in these cases, because I find that there is a lack uh, in terms of follow-up questions uh, when men who are accused of wrongdoing come out and say, well, I didn't intend to you know, hurt anybody's feelings, um, but, there, but there's not a follow-up about the specific conduct. Did you talk to her about her experience with trauma in relation to her sex life? That's the question you ask Governor Cuomo. You don't take his, well, I didn't intend to be, uh, you know, make her uncomfortable as a sufficient response, because this is a serious uh, investigation. On the nursing homes piece that you just mentioned, do you in expect more investigations related to this? And do you think there will be consequences for the governor or his staff who may have participated in manipulating some of the, the data? I think this is this is, seems like a scandal that has a little bit of legs. You know, I think anything, you know, remember that one of the reasons we all, including myself, praised Governor Cuomo in the dark days of our traumatic experiences with, with coronavirus was that he was coming forward and being transparent about the facts, the data, what we knew. And that gave us comfort, not because it was good news all the time, but because it gave us the sense that there was someone in charge who understood and knew what was happening and gave us the information we needed to have some sense about how to keep ourselves and our loved ones safe. So to hear that the books were cooked on something as sacred as, as understanding where and how people are passing away and what we should be concerned about goes straight to the heart of whether we can trust those who we empower by lending them our power, the power of the people. And so I do expect to see lots more in terms of investigation and, and possible consequences if it turns out that the allegations as we're hearing them are true. Well, we'll pay close attention to the developments in both of these stories related to the governor of New York. Maya Wiley, thank you for being here this evening and please stay safe.
Hi, I'm Zerlina Maxwell. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more from Zerlina by clicking any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thanks for watching.